Jim, something we didn't mention in the first uh, half of the show was the big decision by the U.S. Supreme Court basically upholding the federal health care law, law, Obamacare as we know it, which itself is a big political as well as legal issue, uh, particularly for this state, since that was a part of the huge fight uh, between the House and the Senate. Uh, what are your thoughts about the ripple effects uh, politically uh, for Florida and for the legislature of this being upheld? Well, I think clearly health care is going to continue to dominate the discussions in the, in the legislature. I could see it, it's a little premature early to really know how this, this issue is going to, this ruling is going to play out in the legislature. I could easily see the House Republicans saying, hey, you know, the United States Supreme Court upheld this. There's uh, these million plus people in Florida are going to retain coverage. We don't need to do much. Um, Senate President Andy Gardner has already started to say he welcomes this U.S. Supreme Court decision, but he also thinks the legislature still needs to, uh, you know, move to an expansion, Medicaid-funded expansion. So, uh, I think this, this this decision will play into that debate. Another thing to keep in mind, though, next year's an election year, so um, I, I tend to think that House Republicans who run in very generally gerrymandered, gerrymandered districts still aren't going to want to touch you know anything that relates to Obamacare. Pretty conservative so, districts. Pretty conservative districts and and I think probably running against Obamacare is still a winner in those districts. I mean the the base you know it's a, it's almost as much of a symbolic issue as it is a policy issue in those districts. Other comments? Anybody? About right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to the uh, general political environment of Florida. Lots going on. Uh, we got the Florida primary in March. That could be a huge event. And we have two major contenders for the presidency coming out of Florida, coming out of Miami. They know each other. They say they're friends. They want to remain friends. And that's former Governor Jeb Bush and United States Senator Marco Rubio. Um, let's just discuss some of these dynamics. Mary Ellen, let's start with you. Um, right now, if you had to say who had the better of the coming out parties uh, between Rubio and Bush, they both announced mm -hmm. and they both announced uh, uh, in Miami and uh, who, who did the better job? You know, it's, it's really hard to say. I couldn't, I can't imagine a better reception for either of them. Um, I think they both uh, timed it perfectly. The, the, uh, the tone um, that they each set was exactly what they wanted. Um, and and they, it just boosted them. They both got a, a huge bump in the polls as a result. It was especially important for Jeb because he's the one who's, who's really had the most surprising downturn in, in his um, the ratings against him. Um, so, you know, I think I think if anyone did a better job, it's because he needed it most. Um, Jeb did. I think we're going to continue to see that they'll be, um, you know, nicking each other a little bit. But I don't expect there's going to be a hardcore attacking of each other. There's just too many other people in the field. They don't need to. Steve? Um, I think the attacking is going to start uh, fairly soon. It's going to get more. They're shadow boxing. It's going to get a little bit more intense. I thought, uh, I thought Jeb had the slightly better uh, rollout. Uh, it, it, it just felt a little bit more presidential to me. Maybe it was the size of the crowd. I heard people commenting, why isn't he wearing a jacket and tie? You know, he was in shirt sleeves. But he had that array of speakers that seemed to represent almost every demographic and, you know, Tony Jennings, the former lieutenant governor and so forth. It was impressive. Uh, right now, uh Hillary Clinton seems to be doing pretty well against any Republican that she runs against in Florida. And that's a long way away, long way away. And it may be that there are so many people running for president on the Republican side, she would show up well against any of them. But Jim, who do people think would be the best candidate against Hillary Clinton in Florida? I, I think the, there's becoming a you know, body of knowledge or body of view that uh, that Rubio would be a, a tougher candidate for her to run against. Um, primarily, it's you know partly generational, and it's also he is you know pitching this fresh fresh view, and that she is um, older, and the Clintons have been around forever, 
and uh, so that that he could offer that uh, you know that that position that would take her on. I do think never forget in Florida that Jeb Bush has a lot of institutional power in terms of the fundraisers, the uh, the, the party leaders in a lot of areas of the state. So I would never discount his ability to get votes in the state because of sort of that institution. Even all these years later, after he's been out of office, he st it was evident at his rolling out uh, press uh, event. I mean, there was a whole lot of uh, longtime party leaders, and uh, you know, sort of the institution of the party is behind him. John, uh, we've got a long ways to go before the March primary, but. Obviously, that primary is a winner-take-all primary, as I recall, and it, you got two favorite sons. One of them is likely to win. And how important is that going to be? Could it be that the Florida primary might result in the selection of the Republican nominee? Well, it could, I suppose, from this vantage point. Uh, you're going to have a couple of big states, uh, big state primaries before you have Iowa, the caucuses, then you're going to have New Hampshire. If, if a Jeb Bush, for example, were able to, he, to come out of New Hampshire with a victory and then follow it with a win in Florida, that could be really significant for, for Jeb. Um, I, I would think that he might be maybe the only candidate that would be positioned to maybe declare victory almost after Florida. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But nonetheless, uh, he may be the, the, the only candidate in this vast cavalry charge of Republicans that are out there right now who could, um, with, with a victory in New Hampshire followed by a big win in Florida, could, uh, could virtually seal it up. Um, but I, at the same time, I think uh, you're right. It, it is a very, very long way to go. Steve, uh Looking down the road now, this far out, um, what would you say would be some potential mines along the road that a Jeb Bush, for example, could, not just in Florida, but nationally, could step on and it could blow up and say, oh, maybe that's too dramatic. Some r real problems for him to avoid as a candidate. And we'll go to Marco after that. But what are some potential problems for Jeb Bush? I think uh, Jeb Bush decides to downplay the importance of Iowa, and he comes in third or fourth in Iowa, for example. Now, there's a much more uh, of a, he's got a lot more riding on New Hampshire. Uh, I want to remind you briefly about a presidential candidate a couple of cycles ago who put all his eggs in the Florida basket, and it was Rudy Giuliani, and he got steamrolled, and his candidacy died and ended. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, these these early states that come up before Florida are really important. They can't wait for Florida, can they? That's right. No, they they can't. can't wait. They can't. All and right. When, uh, and when you have twelve people running, twelve, the guy who gets twelve percent in Iowa is going to win that that caucus. Mary Ellen, does the very fact that there are twelve people running for president of the United States on the Republican side is that in itself is that good because it shows competition and that will or provides competition and therefore a stronger candidate will emerge or is that potentially a sign that there's trouble ahead and might be hard to come out of that uh, as strong? I think it's, you know, I think if there were five candidates it would be a sign that, that the party is robust and strong. When you have this many candidates and so many that are similar uh, but, but still out there, it's a sign that there's lack of confidence in the designated front runners or that the establishment is, a sta you know. So Jeb raises the most amount of money. He's got the pedigree. He's got the history. All these other candidates are continuing to come out of the woodwork, you know, people that you would think would be on the Jeb bandwagon. Um, and, you know, you've got Bobby Jindal and, and Rick Perry, two people who are very close to Rick Scott. Who, where does Rick Scott go? Um, I think it's a sign that the party is deeply divided, and, it, and, it's, um, and somebody like Jeb couldn't pull it off, even though he tried very hard to stave off this kind of uh, field. All right, I'm going to kind of play like Swami. Was that the name of the person on Johnny Carson? I don't know his character, but Jim, unfortunately, I'm coming back to you, you're the man. Um, okay, let's go with this question. Um, 
might be somebody else besides Marco or Jeb, but who wins the Florida primary just based on current trends? I'll say Jeb. I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I, I'd say Jeb. Okay. Any reason why? I, I think part of it is I think he's playing the long game. I mean, he's got he's g gathering so much money and that he, uh, you know, when it comes to Florida where it's going to be really expensive to run, he's going to be positioned financially, and I think that uh, that's going to play a large role uh, in allowing him to, to, to stay in the race as long as he, he needs or wants to. Uh, we have less than a minute. John? Oh, well, I think it's Jeb as well. It, it, it almost has to be Jeb. He has so much of a, a built-in base in this state, uh, and uh, if he doesn't win Florida, he, he can definitely pack it in. And Steve, who warns that it might be neither one of them, who? Uh, no, I, I, I think Jeb Bush as well. But I, I, a quick point, Marco Rubio could lose this battle but win the war. If Rubio doesn't become the nominee, he's still well positioned to run for governor in two years. And Mary Ellen? I think Jeb will win um, in the primary, but he will not be on the general election ballot. Panel, I want to thank you all. This has been very entertaining, and we'll get back together again and prognosticate. Thanks.